and to talk about the left atrium the left atrium is uh, positioned like a quadrangular chamber posteriorly it's appended that is the left auricle projects anteriorly to overlap the infundibulum of the right ventricle the left atrium forms about two third of the base of the heart the greater part of the upper border the parts of the sternocostal surface and the left surface and the left border the left atrium receives deoxygenated blood from the lungs through four pulmonary veins situated over here pumps it to the left ventricle to the left atrioventricular or the bicuspid or the mitral valve features the posterior surface of the atrium forms the anterior wall of the oblique sinus of the pericardium the anterior wall of the atrium is formed by the interatrial septum the two pulmonary veins open into atria of each side of the posterior wall the greater part of the interior of the atrium is smooth walled it is derived embryologically from the absorbed pulmonary veins which open into it muscular pectinati are present only in the auricle where they are forming a reticulum and this part develops from the original primitive atrial chamber of the heart tube the septal wall shows the fossa lunata corresponding to the fossa valis of the right atrium in addition to four pulmonary veins the tributaries of the atrium of the atrium include the few venae cordis minima if we compare the right and the left atrium the right atrium receives venous blood of the body left atrium receives the oxygenated blood from the lungs right atrium pushes blood to right ventricle to the tricuspid valve whereas left atrium pushes blood to the left ventricle to the bicuspid valve the right atrium from the right border part of the sternocostal and the smaller part of the base of the heart whereas the left atrium forms major part of the base of the heart right atrium enlarges in tricuspid stenosis and the left atrium enlarges in mitral stenosis coming to the left ventricle the left ventricle is receiving oxygenated blood from the left atrium and pumps it to the aorta it is forming the apex of the heart part of the sternocostal surface most of the left border and the left surface and left two third part of the diaphragmatic surface externally the left ventricle has three surfaces the anterior or the sternocostal surface the inferior or the diaphragmatic surface and the left surface over here the interior is divisible into two parts the lower rough part called the trabeculae carnea developing from the primitive ventricle of the heart tube the smooth upper part or the aortic vestibule giving origin to the ascending aorta and this part develops from the mid portion of the bulbous cordis the vestibule lies between the membranous part of the interventricular septum it's the interventricular septum membranous part and the anterior or the aortic cusp of the mitral valve the interior of the ventricle shows two orifices the left atrioventricular or the bicuspid or the mitral valve and then the aortic orifice guarded by the aortic valve there are two well developed papillary muscles the anterior or the superolateral papillary muscle grace says superolateral and then we have an inferoseptal or the posterior papillary muscle 
superolateral inferoceptral chordae tendini from both the muscles are attached to the cusps of the mitral valve as you can see it's in the mitral valve and you can see this is the chordae tendini now the cavity of the left ventricle is circular in cross section the walls of the left ventricle are three times thicker than those of the right ventricle as clearly visible in this diagram if we compare the right and the left ventricle the right ventricle is thinner than the left one third thickness of the left ventricle whereas the left ventricle is much thicker than the right three times thicker than the right ventricle the right ventricle pushes blood only to the lungs left ventricle pushes blood on top to top of the body and down to the toes right ventricle contains three small papillary muscles whereas the left ventricle consists of two strong papillary muscles the cavity is concentric in right ventricle whereas it is circular in left ventricle contains deoxygenated blood left ventricle contains the oxygenated blood right ventricle forms two third sternocostal surface and one third diaphragmatic surface whereas left ventricle forms one third sternocostal surface and two thirds of diaphragmatic surface now the area of the chest wall overlying the heart is called the precordium rapid pulse or increased heart rate is called tachycardia slow pulse or decrease heart rate is called bradycardia irregular pulse or heart rate is called arrhythmia consciousness of one's heartbeat is called palpitation and inflammation of the heart can involve more than one layer of the heart inflammation of the pericardium is called pericarditis of the myocardium this is the outermost covering called the pericardium of the myocardium is called myocardic myocarditis and the endocardium is called endocarditis normally the diastolic pressure in ventricle is zero a positive diastolic pressure in the ventricle is evident of its failure so any one of the four chambers of the heart can fail separately but ultimately rising back pressure causes right sided failure that is congestive cardiac failure which is associated with venous pressure edema of the feet and breathlessness on exertion heart failure right side due to the lung disease is known as corp